Hello there once again and welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett along with Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And today, sort of a milestone, show number 650. Yes, and I can't think of a guest we'd rather have on mm -hmm. show number 650 than the guest we have today, OSU Athletic Director Mike Holder. Uh, we've had Mike on before a couple of times. He's gracious with his time. He always has uh, interest, interesting information about what's going on up there, what are the projects, what are the uh, milestones and goals, and uh, he's an interesting guy to talk to, and he's, he's really uh, generous to drive from Stillwater down here to Oklahoma City to yeah, do this. And he's got that program heading in the right direction. Mike Holder, today's guest on The Verdict. We'll be right back. can offer is insight into understanding the Native American art, how these artists are expressing themselves as cultural people. I am Heather Ottone. I'm a Native American researcher and curator, and I am Chickasaw. I can remember in first grade the teacher saying, well, you're so lucky you don't look Indian. That was difficult to hear, because it was what I was. It's what I am. I think there's a renaissance going on amongst the tribes. I think the Chickasaws are leading that. We didn't die. We're not gone. So what are we now? And what can we do now to start to form that identity, to survive into another century? And to have the culture guiding us into that future, that would be significant. See more stories about the Chickasaw people at Chickasaw.tv. People have been talking about energy independence for a long time. It's always been popular, but today it's possible. We have an enormous supply of oil and gas in the United States, much more than we thought just a few years ago. New technology, massive new discoveries, largely made by Oklahoma companies. It literally changes everything. And Oklahoma is leading the charge. Go watch this video to see why. Energy independence starts with us. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. And Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really thrilled to welcome back to the set of The Verdict Mike Holder, the athletic director at Oklahoma State University. Mike did his undergraduate work at Oklahoma State University, did his MBA there as well. He was an All-American golfer uh, at Oklahoma State University and went on after just a couple of three years out of uh, OSU to become the uh, golf coach there for uh, approximately 32 years, a long tenure as a and long and successful tenure as golf coach at Oklahoma State University. Uh, during that time, he won eight national championships, had 25 conference championships, had 112 All-American golfers, uh, a record that is unsurpassed uh, by anybody anywhere uh, from a national standpoint. In 2005, he took the position as athletic director, and there's been nothing but the same kind of successful changes uh, in the university program as a whole that took place in the golf program while he was running that. He's overseen tremendous success uh, on the field, in facilities, in donations, and in school spirit and momentum. Uh, things have really turned around in a very positive way, not that they were not positive before, but they are better now than ever and uh, Mike congratulations on that and welcome back. It's a pleasure to be here. Appreciate, appreciate the invitation. It is great to have you here and uh, the program is doing so well. Why don't you just give kind of an overview right now of where you think the athletic de uh, department is here. Well you know we've sold a record number of season football tickets this year, uh, hmm. 50,000. We set that Jeez. goal every year for the last and, four. And, and what was it say it. five or ten years ago? Because that uh, seems like a lot more. Let's put, let's put it in terms of the public sales. Okay. Take out the students. Uh, we sold 39,000 and change this year. Five years ago, we probably were under 30,000. So, mm -hmm. we've had a, a huge uptick in mm -hmm. the public ticket sales, where, which is where you make most and of your where money. Where are they coming from? Do you have zip codes on? Or are they? Is it all over? Everywhere. It, it, okay. Everywhere. Everywhere. And you know, it's amazing what happens when you win. <laughs> yeah. But uh, our students are turning out. Uh, we sold 11,000 student tickets, and that's so crucial because that's your mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. You need to engage those students while they're on campus. 
uh, make them passionate about athletics, uh, and then when they get out in the world making a living, they'll, I hope, think back about the good times they had back on campus, and want to come yeah. back, buy season tickets, and go to the games. Well, and you want to make it a tough place to come in and to, for the visiting teams, and the students have got to be a part of that. Absolutely. It's all about winning. <laughs> and, they, you know, that atmosphere, you know, everybody, I think, guys my age, I'm 65 years old now, every time I come to that stadium or go into a basketball arena, and I feel that enthusiasm from the student body. It's almost like I'm back in school again mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> you know, you, you think you can leap <clears throat> tall buildings in a seat, single bound and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing like memories to invigorate you. So many capital improvements at the football stadium, but a lot of other your facilities have been improved as well. Yeah, and I, uh, we just dedicated our new indoor practice facility on Friday. Uh, it's the mm. Sherman E. Smith Training Center, primarily for football, but for all sports. And we've had four or five sports in there already working out. Uh, it, it's been open since August, but we had the formal dedication on Friday, and it was quite a quite a day because, uh, and if you don't mind, I'll tell a little bit of story. A little no, story. Oh, sure. please do. Uh, in 1973, when I, when I became the golf coach at Oklahoma State, and I was only uh, three months removed from being a student. I don't know why they decided <laughs> to hire me, but they did. Uh, I looked at my budget uh, after I'd, you know, accepted and kind of the smoke cleared you realize what kind of job you've got in front of you and I looked down there at twenty seven thousand dollars and I, they were paying me sixty five hundred of that so it's twenty thousand five hundred <laughs> and I got to add it up scholarships that was a big part of that <laughs> team travel equipment memberships at the local golf course you know they must have wanted me to just stay in Payne County <laughs> you can't go very far on that and so I just all of a sudden I broke out into a sweat and I thought what are we gonna do we can't uh, have a, a competitive team on a national level with that kind of budget and a friend that I had met at the at the golf course out there practicing uh, his name was Jerry Walsh she had a sister who lived in Stillwater he'd come back to visit her and he was in the oil business in the mud business selling drilling mud and so I'd gotten to know him when he'd come out and hit practice balls while he was in Stillwater visiting. And so he dropped by my office and uh, just said, you know, is there any way that I can help you? you know, I know you're new on the job and got to be something that you need. And I said, yes, sir. We're going to have a pro-am this fall, try to raise money. Our budget is uh, not adequate. And I'd love it if you'd come play in this pro-am. So what's it going to cost? And I said, I think probably $150 and we'd like to get 100 people. You know, you could net probably seven to eight thousand out of fifteen thousand dollars and he said I tell you what I'll come and I'll bring two of my friends well you know who you showed up with <laughs> Boone Pickens <laughs> and Sherman Smith my goodness. and the reason there for that relationship was Jerry Walsh was in the mud business Sherman Smith was a drilling contractor uh, Boone Pickens had an oil company and we've got the Sherman Smith Indoor Facility and the Boone Pickens Stadium. Right across the street from one another. That was an important pro-am. And uh, Boone and Sherman were fraternity brothers. They mm. share the same birthday, five, uh, five years apart, May 22nd. And uh, all three went to OSU, obviously. But I think the entire renaissance for our athletic programs and our entire university started that day in 1973 mm. when those three guys showed up for our pro-am. They never missed a pro-am till 1995 when Jerry Walsh and his wife were killed in a car wreck. So mm. not only were they uh, loyal and uh, generous, but uh, you know to put that on your calendar every year when you're running a major corporation, uh, pretty phenomenal. And Boone has never missed a pro-am ever since then. So you can trace back all the stadium improvements, all the athletic improvements, and this billion dollar campaign that was uh, has been kicked off by Burns Hargis. It mm -hmm. exceeded a billion dollars. I think it all starts back with that threesome that showed up that day. I really hit the lottery that day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I look back and sometimes you never know when something bad that appears to be bad is good. That small budget was the best thing that ever happened to our golf program. And that's, hmm. that all happened within the first few months of your employment as golf coach. Yeah, I'd say, you know, I, I got the job in July. I would say that was August that Jerry came by to see yeah. me. And he did so many great things. You know, you don't see his name on any buildings. He didn't make any large donations, but he's just as critical as anybody else. At least else. financial donations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He made and donations other ways, sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Many other ways. And in our football locker room, we pay homage to those guys. Uh, we've got four lockers. Uh, locker number one is Boone Pickens. Locker number two is Malone Mitchell. 
who he and his wife Amy gave the second largest gift in the history of the university. Uh, locker number three is Sherman Smith, who's the third largest donor, and then locker number four is Jerry Walsh. Oh, look at that. Wow. That's All a great, teammates. great story. Yes, sir. Talk about your winter sports. You got uh, two basketball teams and a, and a wrestling program getting ready to go. Well, I, and I think we have a chance to win championships in all those. Uh, you know, I think women's team, I think they're picked third or fourth in the conference. Uh, probably one of the best teams we've ever had. Uh, Travis Ford's team is picked uh, to win right along with Kansas and for, mm -hmm. the, for the men's championship. And we've got Marcus Smart. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, that day he decided to come back. <laughs> what a great day. And what a ringing endorsement for our university and our, and our basketball program that a guy would turn his back on 16 million, he says just for a year. But to turn your back on $16 million when you really don't have anything, to want to come back and play another year with your teammates and be a student at OSU, I mean, yeah, what's that worth? Yeah. A lot more than $16 million, I think, to our university. So we've done some good things uh, in response to that commitment that he made. We've got a brand new video board in Gallagher-Iba, so when fans come to the basketball games, you're going to see a high-definition video board. And then we're going to be able to turn the lights out. That's what Marcus wanted to do and have our player introductions, kind of like the Thunder, mm -hmm. and kick it up a notch. <coughs> so good things are happening around there. Wrestling, I think they've got a chance to win the national championship this year, and it's going to be in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be in uh, what, March? Yes. Yeah, March. So we hope everybody turns out for that and watch the mm -hmm. Cowboys and the Sooners try to bring home the NCAA crown. I think OU is going to be right there in the mix, too. Yeah, that, the, the NCAA event is, I, I think, the, the favorite one from my perspective for us to host because it comes sold out. You know, most yeah. NCAA events want, want the local population to buy tickets and everything. Wrestling, it's hard to get a ticket, and, and, uh, but our fans are, are legendary for wrestling. Mm -hmm. We'll be back with more with Mike Holder right after this. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. We are back on The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and Oklahoma State Athletic Director Mike Holder. Mike, I know one of the primary duties you have as athletic director is keeping the coaching positions filled. Uh, do you have any new coaches on campus you can tell us about or any openings uh, for coaches that you can tell us about? Well, we've got two new coaches and both in the golf program. We had uh, Alan Bratton, who we elevated from the head women's position to head men's coach. And then Courtney Jones, who had been his assistant on the women's team, we let her take over for the women's program. So both of them are doing very well this fall. They've already played two or three tournaments, maybe four. Uh, I think both are ranked in the top five, and I think both of them have a chance to contend for the national championship. So, Are there any, any sports that you are thinking of adding, looking at adding, or are you pretty well full? You know, you'd all, I always have people uh, wanting to add something, and yeah. it's usually either soccer for the men or volleyball for the women. 
And I give them the same answer every time. We would love to be more diversified. We'd love to offer more sports. But until we can fund the sports that we have at a national championship level, provide all the facilities and everything that goes with it, then it's not fair to the athletes we have and the coaches we have to add another sport and take away from them. So mm -hmm. uh, we're moving in that direction. Uh, our budget's never been bigger. But to put it in perspective for you, our competition in the Big 12, the people that were measured by right. the University of Texas, the University of Oklahoma, you've got the University of Texas budgets, I think 167 million this year. Uh, Oklahoma's is somewhere around 100. Ours is 63. So if you've had add OU and OSU together, you still don't equal Texas. So we've got to close that funding gap a little bit before we think about it. It sounds like sports. you're on the way to doing it, though. Mm -hmm. We're trying. It yeah. seems like every step forward we take, they take two. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're set a high standard, which is good. Yeah. Hey, a couple of months ago, Oklahoma, um, Oklahoma State was singled out by Sports Illustrated. Uh, your, your reflections back on that period for your program. Well, I was uh, very concerned about it when we first met with uh, the two writers from Sports uh, Illustrated, and they presented it like, 60 former athletes on the record, everything thoroughly vetted with their legal teams, 30 former employees, coaches, et cetera, same thing. And they went through the allegations and I thought this is gonna be serious stuff. Uh, but after it came out, it, uh, I don't think it was nearly as significant as we'd anticipated. And our charge all along has been to play by the rules. You know, when Boone Pickens gave that $165 million, he only asked for one thing in return, and that is play by the rules. You don't need to cheat to win, whether it's business or athletics, and it's uh, not worth it if you have to cut some corners. So just play by the rules and make everyone proud of the teams that we put out there. So we have a, a commitment to playing by the rules, doing it the right way, and I look at this as an opportunity to find out if we're as good as we think we are. And if we are, this investigation that's uh, ongoing between the NCAA and uh, the gentleman that we hired, Chuck Smirt, to represent us, they're out there checking all the sources, looking under every rug, behind every chair to find out if we are doing anything wrong. If we are, we'll do something about it and we'll be better off because of the investigation. If we find out that we haven't done anything, then more power to us. I'm sure they're going to find something, though. I mean, it's, you have 400 athletes and uh, 157 employees in our department. You have 6,000 other employees at the university and 2,000, 200,000 living alumni. You can't control everyone. So it would be pretty naive to say that you're perfect. But uh, we welcome the scrutiny, and we'll stand by what happens. Before the show started, we were talking about the weather, and you were saying that the golf course could, could use some rain, but the, that, that course is legendary, and so are the, the two programs you have out there. Talk about this year's golf program. Well, uh, you know, winning national championships is just kind of the, for the men's side, it's standard. Uh, now, we don't win every year, but we like to think that we are. <laughs> it's kind of like OU football or OSU wrestling. Uh, and we hit a little lull there. You know, we had a streak that I think was unprecedented in athletics. We had gone to every finals, every NCAA finals for 50, 65 straight years. And we broke that, lost that in 2012. You know, you could look across the athletics to think you got to the final 30 teams 65 years in a row. You didn't win every time, but it's a testimony to your commitment and the, uh, the quality of the talent that you have in your program to do something like that. So I think we're gonna get back to that standard uh, that golf course is a big part of that. Gives us a chance to compete against the very best out there in recruiting. Uh, so I, I've always felt good about our golf program, but, but under the leadership of Alan Bratton, I really feel good about that men's side. Courtney Jones is young, first time she's been a head coach. Uh, I think she'll learn kind of like I did when I took over in 1973. But she's enthusiastic, a hard worker, and <coughs> passionate about what she does. And I think she'll do the most important thing, whether you're an athletic director or a coach, and that's recruit. If, if you're a coach, you're after the best talent. If you're an athletic director, you want to have some friends with a lot of money because it's very expensive to try to compete for championships. Mm -hmm. You may have said this, and I missed it, but are either of those two new golf coaches uh, OSU graduates? Alan Bratton is. He was uh, College Player of the Year in 1995 on one of our teams and uh, won a national championship that wow. year. Uh, about one of the few things that Tiger Woods didn't ever win. He was a freshman at Stanford that year. So it's kind of a 
we could talk about that tournament a lot because we won that with only four players in a playoff. <laughs> the normal squad size is five, so I don't want to tell anybody how I messed up and only had four. <laughs> <laughs> and that would have been the ultimate coaching faux pas if we hadn't won, but they made me look good at the end of the day by winning that championship. Courtney Jones is a graduate of Tulsa. Ah. Uh, she played golf over there, so two in-state products, which yeah. I think is really good to be leading our program. Mm -hmm. Let's talk baseball and softball. Uh, softball, Rich Willigman is doing a great job. I think he's very enthusiastic about this year. And then, you know, Josh Holliday is our men's coach. Mm -hmm. uh, his dad used to be our head yeah. coach and our, then our pitching coach. Worked for Gary Ward. You know, and there's that Holiday Oklahoma State, Gary Ward connection in the World Series right now with John Farrell, one of our former pitchers and former pitching coach, is the manager of the, uh, the Boston Red Sox. And then you have Matt Holiday, Josh's younger brother, not little brother, younger brother, because <laughs> he's quite a bit bigger than yeah. Josh, but he's playing for the Cardinals. So I know Josh is going to be there in Boston tonight for that game. Mm -hmm. But everything is <clears throat> upbeat about our baseball program. Josh uh, hired Rob Walton, another former Cowboy who was mm -hmm. the head coach at Oral Roberts, to be his pitching coach. And then he uh, attracted Marty Lees from Oregon State. They'd won back-to-back -back national championships, and Marty was the head coach in waiting there. So quite a coup to get Marty Lees to come and join the Cowboys. So I think those three coaches are going to build a real powerhouse in collegiate baseball. My charge as the athletic director is to get them a new baseball stadium, and we're working diligently toward that every day. Uh, the Alley P. Reynolds Stadium was uh, kind of state of the art at the time it was built under the circumstances, but it's, uh, it's a little uh, aged now. Yeah, and you know, the footprint is small, and yes. it's located right next to Bennett Hall, one of our dormitories, and right next to Softball, and then it's got two main arteries close by, so they really don't have enough room to expand, and you need to expand. You need to add some things, so yeah. you need to uh, leave Alley P behind at some point, and we've got a great location mm -hmm. for a new stadium. Uh, we want to build the best baseball stadium in coll collegiate baseball, and hopefully put a team in it to match. Mm -hmm. People expect a lot out of an athletic director, a lot of different roles that, that uh, you're required to play. And, and it almost seems as if now people expect a television network uh, producer to, to be on board. There's, there's so much expectation on putting together a, you know, some sort of multimedia way for all of your sports to be uh, on the Internet and on the web or even on, on, on television. How do you deal with that? Because that's, that's relatively new to the expectation. Well, we're just in the infancy of dealing with that, and it's especially uh, uh, a hot topic in our conference because you have what's happened with Texas and the Longhorn Network and all the things that come along with that. And then Joe Castiglione, I'd say in the, around the country, second to the Longhorn Network is what Joe's put together with uh, Sooner Vision, I think is what it's called. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what he's got. You know, when ESPN shows up on their campus, they don't need to bring a truck, production truck or anything. They just plug in and they're ready to go. You know, live, national television, same level of broadcast that all the viewers are accustomed to seeing. So the rest of us in the conference got to pick it up. Well, in that vein, we just have about a minute left. What can fans, boosters, supporters of the program do to help you and to help your program? Well, number one would be buy season tickets and come to the games, whether it's football or basketball or softball, doesn't matter what it is. There's no substitute for people uh, being there for the games. Kids love that. They thrive on that. It's huge for recruiting. Uh, you just you could make a long list of what that does for you. And then financially what it does for you. That would be number one. If you can't afford a ticket or if you're too far away, then read about us and talk about us and say good things because word of mouth spreads. Mm -hmm. And there's no better uh, advertising out there than word of mouth. And it's always better to say something good rather than something bad. You know, I, I used to kind of look at OU and be jealous of the success that they've had in football. It's hard not to be. But it's probably the best thing that ever happened to us in our football program because if they can do it in Norman, why not Stillwater? Mm -hmm. And it shows around the country that it's possible to do that in the state of Oklahoma. So um, I, love, I love it when any other program in, in our conference does well. You know, right now we're a little bit down perception-wise with the SEC and some of the other major conferences because, because what's going on in football. And we really need to get Oklahoma, Texas back to where they're right there in the national title hunt. And then the rest of us, it's up to us mm -hmm. to, to try to measure up to that same standard. i got a hunch you will. Mike, thanks for coming on oh, the very My pleasure. Together. Yeah, thanks so yeah. much. Yeah. Kent and I'll have a final word when we get back.
All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. We have uh, uh, children coming from a different lifestyle, different mindset. You have to open your arms and really do what you have to do to have that child become a part of your family. And if it's more patience, that's what you do. Kids got to know they can trust you. And that's what we've tried to do with these kids. You will always be mom and dad to me. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political government and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. We're back on The Verdict, wrapping up a show with Oklahoma State Athletic Director Mike Holder. You know, there was a day when the athletic director was a retired football coach, yeah. you know, who, who did that yeah. in his spare time, yeah. made a schedule, and, and I, don't, I don't know if he did anything much, much more than that. Gave him an I, office. I'm, I'm sure I'm being unkind to that generation of athletic directors, but let me just say it's been much different today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, indeed, and uh, Mike Holder, uh, his roots are as deep as they possibly can be mm -hmm. at Oklahoma State University. And with the combination of that, plus as bright as he is and as uh, much uh, business and uh, sports class as he exudes, uh, he's just done an outstanding job. And of course, I think the, the term class applies to the Oklahoma State administration from top to bottom. Yeah, well, one of the great college golf coaches in, in NCAA history, no, no question about And he's about got that. a great college president to deal with, too. He does. He does indeed. Burns Hargis. We got some website information for you. Uh, you can check out more on Mike's program in Stillwater at okstate.com, okstate.com. And we have a website as well. And we'd love you to, to log on to our website and tell us about a guest you'd like to see us visit with or a subject matter that you'd like to see us discuss. Our website is theverdict.tv. That's theverdict.tv. That's going to do it for this edition of The Verdict. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week right here.